2016 roll call. So Suzanne Emball, Randy Steed, George Nell present. Julie Stauffer away with family and Dustin Johnson had a death in the family, so he won't be here tonight. So attorney Derek Jones and Cook Treasurer Lisa Mullaney. Pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of 5-3-2017. Yeah. On the agenda, the oh, minutes are 17. All right, I'm here. <laughs> cut and paste, cut and paste. <laughs> yes, it is. Any additions, corrections, questions? I move to accept the minutes from the May 3rd, 2017 meeting. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Then all five saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Motion carries. Three, zero. Citizens input. Hi, Jan. Hi, George. <laughs> Well, I had some questions about it's some properties on our street, but Corey is, assures me that it's being addressed. And the gentleman across the street from Mick Faulkner, my next door neighbor, with the uh, stuff from his fire is still sitting should, in the yard. So should be on the report that I sent you in. It's a big pile, too. Pardon? It's a big pile, too. Oh, there's two of them, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. Jeez. Okay. Anyone else have any citizens' input? I'm going to move on to the input presentation. Yeah, introduce yourself again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Have some light reading material for you. <laughs> for you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and even better, a video because. Sit, listen, and talk on that. of your meeting I understand it's a hectic schedule but this is something we are dealing with all of our member communities this year it's been a while since we've been able to get out and, and meet the counselors so we thought we could put together a little bit of video just to kind of describe who we are what we do and how we like to work with our member communities so this is just a quick five minute video um, I will go ahead and, and play and answer any questions you may or may not have CEO of Indiana Municipal Power Agency. Thank you for allowing IMPA to take this moment to introduce ourselves. IMPA is your community's wholesale power provider. This means we generate and purchase power which we then sell to your community. Your utility in turn distributes that power to local homes and businesses. IMPA was founded in 1983 by 11 municipally owned electric utilities just like yours. Since then, IMP has grown to serve 61 member communities in both Indiana and Ohio. Our core business consists of providing our members with a low-cost, reliable, and environmentally responsible power supply through a diverse power portfolio. 
for some of you, this may be new information, but others, uh, it is a reminder of the long history and the partnership that the Indiana Municipal Power Agency and your community share. The Indiana Municipal Power Agency was created as a political subdivision of the state of Indiana by the General Assembly in 1980. As a not-for-profit joint action agency, IMPA does not pay dividends to shareholders and has access to tax-exempt financing. The goal of the agency has always been to provide low-cost, reliable, and environmentally responsible power to municipally owned electric utilities across Indiana. IMPA's electric rates are among the lowest in the state, and we expect to continue to have some of the lowest rates for many years to come. We began to provide power to 24 Indiana municipal utilities in 1983. As of today, IMPA serves 60 Indiana communities and one in Ohio. That's a total customer population of approximately 340,000. IMPA is a financially strong company with annual revenues of approximately $460 million and total assets of approximately $1.7 billion. IMPA provides power to our members on a total requirements basis, which means we provide all of the power to your community. If your utility was to add or lose a large electric customer, it's up to IMPA to adjust the power provided to your community. In this way, IMPA takes the risk of any changes in your power supply needs. In order to provide for our members' power needs, IMPA has invested in power resources to meet that need. IMPA wholly or jointly owns 15 power resources that are comprised of 21 units. IMPA's total power load is 1,300 megawatts. What isn't generated by IMPA-owned generation, about 14%, is purchased in the market. The IMPA Market Operations Center is checking our members' power needs and finds the lowest prices in the market every 15 minutes of every hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. To continue IMPA's promise to provide an environmentally responsible power supply, as well as to keep future rates stable, IMPA has begun constructing solar power generating facilities in as many of our member communities as possible. So far, we have installed just over 24 megawatts in 13 solar parks across the state. Our goal is to continue to add at least 10 megawatts a year. While our core business is to provide electricity that keeps your lights on, over the years, IMBA has added additional services and resources to strengthen and support our members' local communities. This includes the IMPA Service Corp, which provides cost-effective system engineering, design construction, maintenance, and member cost of service studies, as well as rate design services. IMPA further supports its members with government relations, economic development, marketing and communications assistance, as well as energy efficiency and green power programs as part of its member services division. Argus became a town in 1832 on land purchased from the Potawatomi. It was first known by the name of Sydney. Argus joined IMPA in 2008 and has a peak load of 5 megawatts. IMPA is governed by its members and each member community has a seat on the IMPA board. Your IMPA Commissioner is Electric Utility Assistant Superintendent Jamie Lindstrom. IMPA's long-term focus enables the Indiana Municipal Power Agency to provide low-cost, reliable, and environmentally responsible power supply to its members. Our experienced and dedicated team is here to help you succeed. We are proud to be a wholesale power provider and we want to help your community in every way that we can. We look forward to strengthening our relationship and serving you for years to come. Thank you. Well, sorry with the IMPA overload because of, well, I think we've counted uh, Corey. that it, Corey White. <laughs> I think when you say IMPA about 216 times during that video, but there are all those um, One thing that wasn't mentioned in the video that I wanted to bring up is uh, the board recently approved an economic development rider that is basically a, a discount on the wholesale portion of the bill for all of our member communities. And I'm talking with Jamie and Jim, I, I believe that's been approached to the board right now, or has it been approved? Was it the last meeting that it was approved? But this is something that is uh, competitive with all the other utilities, the wholesale power providers that they have that, that are out there in the region. And it's a five year discount. So the first year, that would be a 20% discount. The second year would be a 15% discount. The third and the fourth would be a 10% discount the uh, fifth year will be a five percent discount and many other utilities have many criteria in order to meet that but we just have two a uh, company must have a new load of a one megawatt and they also must invest a million dollars too so we think it's pretty competitive and glad that the town has that in their economic development toolbox but 
I understand that was a lot of information all there in six minutes, but happy to answer any questions you may have. Gurkha. <laughs> what do you got for him? Anything? Jerry, how about you? you any questions for him? Oh, I, <clears throat> the weight? If I have questions, I don't know. And Jerry's going to be smart. Yeah. Speed up. Yeah. I also want to actually thank Jerry for um, his involvement in IMPA, too. He's been a good partner. Uh, on my side, on the economic development marketing side, we want to have good uh, leaders in the area, too, because they really are the, the fifth soldiers that really help drive home projects, too, and understand has been working closely with them. So thank you for your partnership, too. I believe we want to thanks, too, with Jerry. Thank you, said partners on our video. Hmm. So we partners with our video, so. Yeah. We appreciate that. We can say input as many times. You didn't say as many times, didn't he? Well, thank you all for your time. Um, if you ever have any questions about who we are, what we do, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to come up whenever I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Attorney report, if you don't mind. Oh, look at that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's been college. Yeah, it's been more support. I still don't have any report from Chuck DeWitt yet on 405 South Michigan Street. Um, so I sent him an email today, just kind of a reminder that, uh, hey, we're waiting to get that so we can take some action trying to get that uh, building taken care of. The, the other issue is, and I don't know if this is in your packets or not, hopefully it is. Site development plan application, do you have that from the back? Yeah. There's a change. This was approved originally back on the meeting in April 19. Taking another look at that, there's a paragraph here. This is what was approved. But I've circled this paragraph. You won't see it now, and we don't want to see it now. Um, it made some reference to some things that were kind of conflicting with the language that we had in our land use and development code. So we rerun that, got rid of that paragraph. And if anybody wants to take a look at this paragraph, you're welcome to do that just to see what needs to get out of there. But it talks about um, the application would be necessary for mineral extraction or change of use. That's not necessarily the case. Um, our land use development code talks really about in certain zoning areas, B1, B2, L1, L, uh, light industrial, heavy industrial, that this is required for new construction or construction that exceeds 10% of the floor area, um, or it could be a, a change of use. But we're just trying to be consistent with our land use and development code, so that's why that's different than what we approved basically a month ago. But we would like your approval of that so that Lisa can have that updated form. I make a motion to accept the new site development plan application with all uh, changes. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the new site plan checklist with revisions. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passed. Three zero. Okay. Um, another update on our manufacturing center shell building. Um, talking with Jerry, I think the lease is no shell. Manufacturing no center. manufacturing center. Yes. <laughs> the manufacturing center. The lease regarding the manufacturing center, I think, is is good. Uh, we've reached terms on that. We uh, can't sign the lease until we have details of the financing and the legal description. Though. Um, Clarification on that. I, I thought uh, our attorney had looked it over. He didn't, so I did. But uh, I'll get back with the group on some things that we need to correct. Primarily because of the RDA, and I probably won't get into that right now. But uh, there's some things that I'm expecting to, uh, to propose in terms of changes. I will know probably by tomorrow or the next day. Some of it's going to be with regards to what the lender is going to be requiring. So. Yeah. Um, 
we're looking at running into the uh, end of the month. You know, we don't have another regularly scheduled meeting until June, I think, maybe, what, 7th? Um, so we're probably going to be looking at having to hold a special meeting. Um, I'm not going to be here on the 31st at all. Um, the 30th is, I know there's a plan commission meeting, that's a Tuesday evening. Um, and I don't know that we specifically have to set the date right now as we sit here, but a lot of that's also going to depend on when we get a survey and when we get letters of commitment from the bank about financing and see the details on that. So we're running down to the wire, but it's a work in progress. We're going to have to we're going to have to get it done. And I'm you tell me, but is June second is too late? No, we we'll have an exact session of meeting Monday. This coming Monday. Yeah, I'm not going to be making. And then you're not going to have the information, I don't believe, by then in any way. I have a clear picture when I hear back either Friday or Monday from the bank. What is the actual deadline, Jerry? Could we conduct that at the next meeting in June? I think that would be June 7th. You know, with regards to all the paperwork that needs to be submitted, I think the RDA will be comfortable with uh, understanding that it's still a work in progress with finalizing some things. Provided that I can get the letter from the bank, and, and uh, I anticipate um, probably, as I said, I'll know very shortly what the decision is from the loan committee, and, and it doesn't make any difference right now if, we, if financing doesn't come in place and the lease and everything else goes by the wayside. So my focus for the last week and a half has been the banks. I'm just curious to know, do we need, is, is it June 7th, our next regularly scheduled meeting, is that acceptable to have the lease signed if things are lined up otherwise? I think the RDA will be comfortable with, with we are negotiating the lease with the understanding that their primary concern is going to be the financing. So if we pay attention to financing, get something, even a term sheet from the bank, I think we are we're covered in terms of our documentation. Well, I guess I'm hearing then we don't need to necessarily schedule a special meeting. We can conduct things on June the 7th. Can okay, we get back to you after I know what the bank is doing? And a survey. The okay. well, survey is, will be part of that. Right? right. You've got to tell us, I guess, if we need a special meeting or not. Um, so. Can I get back to you on, yeah. the, on Monday? <clears throat> The next thing I have, guys, is Colonial Courts. Um, I don't know if you have a resolution in your packet. If you don't, that's okay. Um, I brought an extra copy, but I know that the plan, I'm sorry, not the plan commission, the redevelopment commission passed a resolution at their meeting that they had last week. I'm told they did. Um, and basically their resolution needs to mirror the resolution that, that I prepared on behalf of the town that their resolution accepts the transfer of the, of the lots, 12 lots out of colonial estates. This resolution authorizes the transfer of those lots from the town to the development. I know that I've worked a little bit with Mark and uh, Paul and there's an interested purchaser in a couple of those lots and I think they have some things scheduled for the 30th uh, to basically have a public hearing and then a, a meeting. Uh, to hopefully get a purchase agreement put into place with her. So this is the resolution that would transfer the real estate to the Redevelopment Commission, then I also have a deed, and the resolution obviously authorizes the execution of the deed conveying the real estate to Redevelopment. It's only the vacant lots, it's not the roads in the street, it's yeah. not the northwest corner parcel of I think a half an acre, um, it's only the, the buildable lots. 
what we discussed tonight. Correct. And you also, please note also in that resolution that it does also discuss that uh, when the lots are sold, half of the net proceeds come back to the town, so in essence kind of reimburse the town for the expenditure in the first place. Motion to pass resolution 2017 dash what? What do we want? Do we know the number? Yeah. 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 Yes. Anybody got anything while we're waiting? Any other good news? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Okay. Okay. Um, Anybody else go ahead and give our department head reports? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming back. You're not jumping that far out of line. Well, <laughs> <line. laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got anything while we're waiting? Okay. 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 Second. The motion is second to pass resolution 2017-9 is the end of discussion. All the papers signify for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. 3-0. This is one for email. I like this. There's also the need, but it's set up for Dustin's signature. Um, mm -hmm. So I think and the resolution authorizes the execution of the deed, so I think we'll just have Dustin do that at a later date in time. Um, so I'm going to leave that original with you. Okay. <coughs> you guys will need to sign that. That's all I have. I need to accept the attorney's report. Second. Motion and a second to that past attorney's report. Other discussion? All in favor, say the five saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 3 0. Board openings. Orange, could you please go in Dustin's folder and pull out um, an envelope for the park board opening? No, over there. Over here, right? This one? Should be an envelope. Yeah, town bill. <laughs> we'll go ahead and pay that later at it. Yeah. That's to the park board. Yeah. It's well, mm -hmm. supposed to open it? It's, it's for the town council. For the park board opening. What? <laughs> My name is Jerry Becker and I would like to be considered to serve on Argus Park Board. I served on the Park Board previously, had to resign due to conflicts with other groups. I have since given up responsibilities with that organization. Thank you for considering me for this position. Whose appointment is this one? Do you know? It is. Well, here's the deal on this. <laughs> Um, Lisa let me know that Jerry was interested in, in applying here for the park board, so I take a little look at uh, chapter 17 um, of the town code. It says the president of the town board would appoint members of the park board. Um, however, taking a look then at basically the statutes that deal with um, length of term, things of that nature, and any other requirements, um, I don't know when this statute was necessarily enacted, but it was probably after Chapter 17 was put into force with the town code, but Indiana statute says that it's the town legislative body that does the appointment of park board members. Okay. 
okay? So that really means it's up to the council to make that appointment as opposed to the executive, Dustin. Um, another requirement is that you're not supposed to have more than two members of the same political party on the park board. However, there's also a statute that waives that requirement or that the council can waive that requirement in that appointment. But you have to make the finding that there's no other interested parties um, or that there's a need to fill the park board uh, and this is the person that's applied. So in other words, you can waive that requirement that we have more than two of the same political party, but that has to be a part of the, uh, the motion and the approval of Mr. Becker if you're so inclined. I also, just this afternoon, You've seen some of these cheat sheets I have for like Planning Commission, Redevelopment Commission. Um, I just got one put together for Park Board so that we don't have to go down this road again in another two years when we're trying to figure out if Jim Smith or whoever it is, uh, what the requirements would be. Um, we'll have it on a handy little sheet. And what would this term be for this, do you remember? Four years. This, this one's four? They're all four. Um, they're we'll all four-year terms. terms. When this. Park Board got reestablished, it looks like, in 1988, yes. Um, at that point, the terms were staggered. I honestly don't know if that's still being followed. I hope that it is, but that's kind of the intention, is that each of the, each of the four members would go off one year at a time, each year being a new member going off. If there's not somebody there to replace them by April 1, first, I think it's the first uh, Monday in April, um, then that person stays on as the incumbent because there's nobody else there to replace them. So they can actually serve a continuous term and keep going over and over and over. But Jerry's initial term would be for a period of four years. No, it's not. It's an addition to. Okay, so then we have another board of said Phil Dean was the school board trustee appointment. Right, but this, and this says that he can vote. Right? He can vote. Okay, because right now he's our secretary, is that what vote? He, that's an officer, okay. but yes, it's, okay. it's fine that I don't see anything that prohibits that ex officio okay. member from being a, an officer of that board as well. Okay, so we still have another park board opening? No. No? I don't. Right now you have no. Ed, John, Joe Stone, Phil Dean. Right. Okay, and we're looking to oh, add Jerry. Okay. add Jerry. That would be five. All right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Would you say John, Joe, Phil, okay. and okay. Phil Dean is the school board trustee appointment? Yes. yes. Well, as you see, they're knocking down the doors again. If he's willing. I just think by yeah by oral motion to waive the requirement that they be not more than two of the same political party and also move to appoint Jerry Becker at the park board if you're so inclined to make a motion. Make a motion that we waive the political requirements of a member of the park board that you're not and also to appoint Jerry Becker and the member of the park board. Second. There's a motion and a second to appoint Jerry Becker by waiving way to enforce political requirements of the park board. So we had a discussion. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Oh, oh. Push the pass, please do. Okay, we got a full board now.
Yes. Um, that certificate of appointment. Yeah. 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 Hey, we still have the Marshall County Tourism. I think Carol ought to be jumping on that, but she just doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's like what, four or three meetings a year to get a Christmas party. Come on. <laughs> what can I say? <clears throat> EMS building. Unfortunately, I do not have that paperwork written out that I wanted to. I got about halfway through it and put it in better terms. Everything broke loose at work and got busy family and it just doesn't happen. I will have it by Monday. It will be finished by Monday night. Uh, comp plan match. I don't know if anybody's looked at that. Dustin's not here. Julie's not here. I think it's a should be a five member thing, not just two or three of us to look at and bring it up. That's up to you guys. Table that. Table out then and other old business. Anybody have anything? Jerry, Chabot. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, forgive you on the pronunciation. Passing out uh, Marshall County Visitor's Guide, uh, particular page that's identified as, no, I do not page numbers on it, but you'll see these on the left hand side. Um, Mark here, he'll give the report, but just to let you know that uh, the. Uh, oh, that's, this is wrong. Um, you can see the um, ad. Took a different uh, approach to doing the ad this year. I think it's a little bit better. So hopefully you would agree. Uh, it's a little less verbiage, a little bit more information in terms of what's available here in the, in the town of Marcus. So having said that, uh, Mark, you want to give an update? Or you want me to take care of that? I'll take care of it. Okay, of what? <laughs> MCDC. <laughs> okay, you can do that. <laughs> well, I'm going to have enough. We can end up. Some afterwards, if you don't mind, we have to get some entire cars you can read it. <laughs> um, a couple of uh, items, you know, on uh, the first item that you see there on, on the 6th of April, uh, Commissioner Overmeyer and myself went down to go visit with uh, Secretary of Commerce, Jim Challenger, dear friend of ours, talk specifically about uh, US 31. To ensure that that when Mr. Schellinger is talking with NDOT, that they are reminded that we have a large capital investment, some major employers that operate off of 17, uh, State Road 17, and uh, on 17th Road, and, uh, State Road 10. So um, that has led to several other meetings. I'll describe those a little bit later on, but uh, you know, relative to our NCDC. Newsletter that was issued on the 25th. A lot of a lot of the work that uh, has cultivated uh, we have done in the last month and a half has been associated with the uh, manufacturing center as opposed to the shelf building. We still have a little bit of a sour taste in our mouth with regards to that that particular um, title. So uh, on the 15th, you signed the resolution. Uh, 2017-4 to approve the uh, cross to go forward with the project. We then on the 26th of April, we had a meeting with the NDOT new commissioner, I guess, a whole host of NDOT folks uh, was orchestrated and, um, and put together by Senator Randy Head, as well as uh, Representative Jack Jordan here in uh, Marshall County. I think we all know him pretty well. Uh, a lot of Decision makers were there sitting around the table and, and basically to talk about US 31 J terms. And probably in the future we need to be thinking past J terms, specifically because of the capital investment. Great meeting. I think we got what we we're after. If you were at the meeting yesterday at MCEDC, uh, I think Representative Jordan said that that was. We accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. So I, I uh, nothing's ever done until it's done, until the ink's dry. So we're going to be pushing 
head out a little bit further to make sure that, that we have a better plan than J-Trends. Right, very one. so. Um, they made some good movements to us, fair to say. Oh, yeah, uh, I thought Jack was in here, fair to say. Yes. And uh, now it's a matter of them moving up to the but, uh, Great meeting, I think uh, we were there probably for a little over an hour. Talk about uh, mm -hmm. probably a little over an hour. And, uh, I, I got I to gotta say, this is the first time I've seen a NDOT uh, group that was very eager to be very helpful. But yeah, I was in Arizona, Montana, North Dakota. So I don't know if it was because of Commissioner Obermeyer or Senator Hennett or Representative Jordan or Jim Schellinger. You know, we've got a lot of people eyes uh, to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. And I'll remind you, we've said this before, every time you have these elected officials or NDOT officials or whoever in your community, you want to remind them that 31, 10, and 17 are, are very important for the future of this community. Um, you can see the dates, a lot of uh, meetings re um, regarding the uh, design of the buildings and legal survey work. And then a lot of uh, lender meetings, I'm not going to go out publicly and say who the lenders that we are visiting with know it, be satisfied, but there are several of them out there. We want to get the best deal that we can when uh, we have this opportunity. Uh, as I said earlier, to uh, uh, regarding the uh, status of the lease agreement, uh, there are some things that um, that we are expecting. I don't, I don't want to get out there right now in terms of the feedback from the banks, but suffice it to say, um, the golden rule applies. Those with the gold make the rules. So the banks are going to pretty much tell us what they're, what they're going to expect. And so we have to be a little bit flexible in that regard. <clears throat> but we are trying to make it work uh, to uh, make it win for everybody else. Uh, Argus, uh, congratulations on the purchase of uh, 12 lots out of Colonia Estates and it appears like our, our real estate developers over there slash real estate uh, agents are hard to work. I don't know who's taking a brokerage to be up there, but uh, <laughs> good work for you guys. Uh, uh, comprehensive plan, adopted and improved, congratulations. Now apply the plan to work. Uh, we'll help you with every chance we get. County development for the future. Great meeting yesterday. Still open to council. Uh, I think there was two from Argus, three from Argus yesterday. Anybody yeah. Rob Herper there to talk a little bit about the exciting news with the park and with the mail racers and all sorts of stuff. So uh, yesterday I think there was 38 leaders from around the county assembled at Small Lake. Once more, invitation is still open. August the 16th is the next meeting. Did I get that date right, I think? I think so. <clears throat> yeah, my memory is not always the way it should be, but sometimes I cheat. Uh, internal communications, activity report, uh, town meetings, leadership, uh, economic development speaker. I was uh, part of leadership. Congratulations to uh, council. Uh, person, Ms. Amba, she was part of that leadership group, and she actually, her project won the overall competition this year, so it's, uh, it, it's a great platform whereby to talk about economic development to that group. Uh, executive meeting, please, uh, for the Manufacturing Center, um, and just uh, on the 25th of May, we assembled a smaller group in the kind of development for the future, where we talk about how we partner, specifically looking to leverage resources and uh, look for commonality. Uh, this is the group that uh, carried on the discussion with uh, CEDIT a lot last year. Uh, but this year, I think, we'll probably we'll be a much more engaging conversation about roads, road development, that sort of stuff, salt. Uh, buying power coming together. So the 25th is uh, the next meeting. 
we'll have that in Culver. We've had one here. We've had one in Bremen. We've had one in Bourbon. So it's not Culver. And then we'll try to make everybody happy by going to one time. So Dustin's invited. I think uh, Mark will be there too. Uh, he will not be there. I cannot make that. He cannot make that. So it's not a meeting where everybody is invited, but we invite some key people there to talk about funding sharing resources, how we come together to uh, uh, be a little bit more fiscally responsible, which is the number one question of the day for Marshall County. So with that, I'll take any questions. If I don't hear any, I'll, I'll give this to... What did you get in your spare time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, and the last thing I will say, you know, I, I think um, Brian left, I wanted to also say, it was a, a dying fight. Uh, they bring a lot of resources to the table. I'm hoping they can bring more resources, but you know, his, his ability to, to uh, bounce, uh, not only ideas, but planning and that sort of stuff is important for MCDCs. Any questions? Anything I can answer? Oh, good, all right then, for me? New business tax abate forms. Compliance forms. Which one do you want to do first? Simple. Gotta accept these again like we do every year, but they meet the obligations. Or is that uh, is what you're supposed to determine? Yes. If it is a state regulated tax, so and there there's really no requirement, so that one is pretty much a good one. Mm -hmm. If you look at Indiana tool for the one that ends this year um, you'll see on the actual in the middle bar here it says actual employees 39 and they when they did the tax abatement they promised 40 if you look down below this is their last year for this tax abatement they've got 39 employees I don't see a problem with that one And then the third one, if you look um, where it says, when they first started this, they had 50 employees. Now they're down to 39. When they first asked for this abatement, they, um, they were putting in equipment. And they said with this equipment abatement that they would add three more jobs from the 50. So on this one, they are not in compliance, but it is up to you. Um, just because they're not in compliance this year does not mean that they wouldn't be eligible next year. Or if you wanted to just forego and just give it to them, you can do it either way. No, they weren't. So they actually went last year either way. It's not like they're hurting us. I mean, we want them to stay as long as they possibly can, even with whatever room the mill's going around. So I don't see any problem with keeping it, accepting it. But it's done this year, though, anyhow? Does no. Only well, the one is done this year. <clears throat> this one goes until. It was a 10 year tax well, abatement that was done in 2011, so it's 2021. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Motion to go ahead and accept the compliance statements, grant the tax statement. Uh -huh. 
second. No, I didn't. No. I made the motion. No. no. I make a motion to accept the tax abatements for the list of all individually at TAMCO and TAMCO also. Second. Second. Motion and a second to go ahead and honor the compliance statements with ITAMCO and Indiana Municipal Power. Any additions? Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Other new business. I have a couple of things. Did you know? No. You're right, though, but if you're in a quality center, is there that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, there was a planning commission meeting last night, was it? Yes. yes. Um, is that Jim? No. <laughs> I'm back here. Okay. <laughs> you may know more about this than I do, but um, this, what's going on here, folks, and I think, I know, George, you're aware of it, but um, parcel real estate uh, used to be the old Wicks lumber yard, right. if you will. It's four parcels, I believe, um, in the process of being sold. It was owned by a corporation called Quality Setters, Inc. Uh, back in 2007, they requested a rezoning of that property. And that rezoning was granted, but it was conditioned on written commitments that quality setters signed and were also recorded. Um, part of those written commitments indicated that if they ever sold it, um, the planning commission had to approve uh, the continued use of that property as it existed or could you know, impose any other kind of uh, conditions upon that to stay within that uh, light industrial zoning. Last night there was the meeting with the Planning Commission and Co-Alliance is the proposed purchaser. They are agreeing to continue with these written commitments. Um, and I believe that you've got a copy of that in front of you there, but it talks about downlighting, uh, screening vegetation, yeah. uh, fence surrounding the property always be repaired and maintained so that it's secure. Um, and it also is requiring yeah, any lease or sale of this real estate to another party down the road at some point in the future would again uh, impose upon a new purchaser to come back in front of the Planning Commission to see what the idea is for the use out there and see about any other written commitments. Uh, Co-Alliance was obviously willing to abide by these written commitments and they signed that document that you have in front of you. Okay, I see that everybody's got a copy in front of them so you can read that. Um, that's what I know of that arrangement. Do you have anything more to it? No, we had a, we had a public hearing before that. Uh, there was lots of discussion. There was some concerns from surrounding neighbors. They were able to be heard. Um, there were three people from um, the proposed buyers here. I think they answered um, majority of the questions. The <clears throat> plan commission then talked amongst themselves. It is a permitted use for what they want to use it for. Um, and we voted to unanimously approve the use of that property with those uh, contingencies in place. As a real brief summary. <laughs> So it's up to it's up to the council now to basically approve the written commitments or approve the recommendations here of the uh, planning commission regarding these written commitments to maintain that zoning and to allow them to use the property in that fashion. I move that we approve the Co-Alliance LLP commitments. Second. Motion is second to accept the Co-Alliance LLP commitments on uh, the recommendation of the Arctic Planning Commission. Is there any other discussion? If not, in favor, say five, say aye. 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 Opposed, say aye. Motion carries, 3-0.
They are in business. Is that what you want to hear? Thank you. You know what? Thank you. 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 Thank any other new business? Yeah, I have one. Oh, um, the Sally Shy for Linton Myers off a coat, and she wants reimbursed for it. And she went, she said that um, she has a vest. The way that our handbook reads is she, she's entitled to one coat, one hat, one pair of gloves, and a vest. She went, she went out and bought herself another coat that is neon, but it's a lightweight sweatshirt coat, and she wants to know if she can get reimbursed. I don't know what your feelings are on this. I that, told them I had to bring she, she bought that without, she never asked, she just went and done it. I was going to say, she didn't get authorization from her. Yeah, she sure. could at least come and ask. And she, she asked me after she had bought it. Now, I, I did I thought they had a clothing allowance. I might check with the, the clerk. I don't, but I guess they don't know what clothing allowance is. Just they're they're just providing. They're just issued right? certain things. Yeah. But yeah. She she never asked. She just went on. So that's about. I told her I didn't have the authority. It was up to you guys. So. How much is it? Thirty-two ninety-nine with tax. It's thirty-five thirty. Showing up I, don't think that we I mean, if you wanted to, to, I would make a habit of it. But I expose that she's part of the police department. But are you I going to take do it out of our training or our law enforcement fund for equipment? I mean, I don't have a problem with it. It's only 32 bucks. But if that's okay to do. Are you going to buy. I suppose if she wanted one, would have to. Yeah, don't they, do they have to come to you? But yeah, well. I guess the problem is the, po I mean, the policy before. Yeah, I thought they went. Because we both go through it first. Yeah, but she never did. And maybe that wasn't clear. I know. It's. Because I remember going through this with Rod with Susie, so it's probably. It's been done, I know, forever. But normally the police department, normally they deal with them. You're okay so, with it? If you didn't know that, I'll take care of it from here on out. As I say, anything. Yeah. After this, we'll have to go through you. Yes. But are we going to offer one to Ruth? If she wants, I, 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 it's up to him. He's well, in charge. Anything has to be okay. authorized prior to right. buying. So he's well, the I, supervisor. I thought that was understood. But the police officer is the supervisor. And he say he doesn't have any problem with it. Then. He's authorized. The problem in the past has been, they, I think they go right to the, the clerk's office, am I right? I mean, once something to it. She's been coming to the clerk's office and, and telling us what day she wants off and stuff like that. We've had this discussion. Right. So I've she's been trying to. She's been taken care of. Okay. okay. So if you're authorizing it, then that's fine. <laughs> what? Okay. So she's the supervisor. Responsibility of leadership. <laughs> I think we should put him under gym supervision. Yeah, we'll put him under gym. <laughs> I'm all for that. Chief of police. As a matter of fact, I think I made a motion. Negative push right there. Any other new or old business or new business while we're right there? If not, we're going to move to department heads. PD, well, you should have a report, and just a few things um, extra here. I, I give you guys the code for the report. Just keep in mind that that changes all the time, so it's not always, I and mean, there's always more, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I think if you look, most of the stuff has been pretty, been going pretty good. Um, 
The other thing is that we're receiving a notify that we're getting $5,101 for the uh, law enforcement fund, <coughs> city and town court cost. So that's what we also use to, to pay for the truck, or part of the truck, or all of the truck. Um, and the last thing I had was um, a few days ago, or was it last week, I am losing track of my days, we had the break ins of the cars, several of them, and I mean several of them. Um, just real quick, Officer Davis was uh, given information that someone had seen these people going through a car. So he made a traffic stop on the suspect vehicle. Um, couldn't link anything at the time with any break-ins or well, I'll get to that, any, any stolen items. Um, however, he did make an arrest on the driver for, for uh, drugs. Then later information came in and he um, applied got a search warrant got some stolen items, so it's still in the process, but hopefully we get a two arrest warrants or three arrest warrants for that. That being said, all the, the, the set, I mean, numerous vehicles that we got reported, all were unlocked. That would seem to be the MO was going through all unlocked vehicles. Nobody reported anything that was broken um, or damaged the vehicles that physically gained entry. So if anybody really with the community wants to help us, maybe start a security property, it would be a big help as in the guard. Because this has been done before, it was the same MO again, where we've had it in the MVM, you surely remember, and it's, it's people out of town that come in here, it's like their job, go town to town, and that's how they make their living, I guess. So, on a good news, no. It's pretty much solved. That's all I have. Rachel, yes. I have Rachel. a question on code enforcement. Yes. When there are homes, they are being maintained, but they are not lived in. Isn't there something about homes that are not being lived in? As far as? Just like an abandoned home. If they're abandoned, Susan, I think, yes, then that does put them under that purview of the statutes that deal with public nuisance. Okay, if they're not lived in. If they're abandoned. No, and like that's the, where... That's the... There you go. That's the... Yeah. Uh, are you talking about specific property? Well, there's one behind us. There's one on uh, that's, Those are owned by financial companies, I believe, though. Correct? No. It's Are we the same one? It's directly behind us. It's owned by a family. I don't know what you have to tell which one is. The next little house. house. Yeah, that's what I thought. What, the oh, stuff I... Used to be <coughs> yeah. There's more than one. Oh, I'm, angry, I'm not sure. I just swore I was sending stuff to a financial company on that one. I may be wrong. Next is Suzanne. I think that really falls into the unsafe building statutes. We have an ordinance. Our ordinance adopts the state statutes and I think that's where you'll find a reference to an abandoned structure. Now I can't tell you whether abandoned means six months, twelve months. I have to look into that. Well these people have never lived there. We, that would fall out. That, that well, would be my well, matter code enforcement. Correct? Doesn't matter whether the owners live there, it matters whether anybody lives there, I think. Okay. Cats. Uh, so we have one uh, cats in Well, the windows are open to the basement. We walked around it today. Windows are open. And in the past, I called the police department one time because cats were up in the attic looking out the attic windows. So the health department, you can get online and can file a complaint. Sometimes they check it out, sometimes they don't. Work. And that would be an avenue to the health department. Especially if the, the windows are open. Am I wrong seeing Barry? Is there any code that I would be able to yeah, handle? Or that, or is that it's for that unsafe building ordinance. So there is an ordinance that they code off. And that's really something I think the town the council will have to do. The council will tackle that. Okay, we got one. Okay. 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 Okay.
push this walnut it's on the south side. It's, I think the address is walnut, but it's on the it's on the east side of Grove Street. Yeah, well, that's we've dealt with that one numerous times already. Well, yeah, well, there's people. Okay, <laughs> we'll get a list for you. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, then that's something the council would tackle then, something yeah. like that. If it's, a, if it's an action under the unsafe building ordinance, okay. then yeah, if it's something the council's, council's got to issue an order, property owner, and what kind of remediation we're looking for. And, and that's really, a, I'm interested now to see what do you do in terms of an order with an abandoned property. <clears throat> New truck. Or you can have someone just move in and it hit you. I mean, the, it's no, no it's safe. <laughs> well, I mean, it just take hey, after so many years, they can. There's no help. You go. Now. <laughs> You're no help once. <laughs> Where, where's your new truck? Not my truck. It's kind of Vargas' truck. Not my truck. I don't have a truck. It's that it's, um, should be done this coming week. It's supposed to be done this weekend, but now he's saying. This coming because he had installed the spotlight and then, you know, a few other things, but yeah, it's kind of long. <coughs> Any other questions for Corey? Nope. Utilities, Jim. Good question. Well, unfortunately, being packed there, a um, couple of highlights. We did have interruption of service um, several days ago. Ended up being we were fed from Duke and they got the storms down south and took out their feed so while they were switching that's why the lights went on and off about 20 times before they finally got it yeah. straightened out it was not not our equipment it was the people we were fed from uh, update on the water reservoir water treatment plant um, control dynamics was here late last week um, the plants are talking to one another as a matter of fact we've been filling and emptying the water reservoir and filling our tower here in town. It's working uh, well. Um, the uh, control dynamics will be here uh, first of next week and we're going to have a uh, water outage for about two days. So we've got to make sure everything is full as they whip up, rip out wire at our main treatment facility rewire it and get everything back up but then everybody i've talked to says this is state of art state of the art stuff so it will help us market our town um, as far as our water consumption we basically doubled our capacity for potable water um, fire pump is in running and um, itamco is very happy um, it helped with their insurance rates. So, got Gary off my keister for a while. So that's that's progressing. We had an issue over here behind um, North Michigan Street. Uh, property owner, for whatever known reason, decided to dig up their um, sewer without getting located. And now they missed a gas line and are very electric for the bank. You know, God protects drunks and idiots. So um, anyway, they cut the sewer line. It was left open. Um, we contacted the health department. Uh, letters were written. A cease and desist was issued on the work. And the property owner got a nasty gram from Marsh County Department of Health it is they since got a contractor in it is fixed. So and they were told that if we had to incur any cost for cleaning the sewer, we had rain and all that, if we had to incur any cost, they would get a bill. So that's taken care of. Um, that's pretty much it for right now. We do have an executive session scheduled for Monday night um, at 6:30. Uh, for a personnel issue. I'd like to have many of the council members there if we can get. 
quick answer, or quick answer, quick question on this um, control system. Yes. We, this will be all, I mean, smartphone accessible. Yes. We pay stipends for the phones. Yes. Correct. Correct. Well, we should pay for that on that phone then. As the town? The town is paying for the software. Mm -hmm. Um, and for that service to go to two people, two. and the rest of it is main is from the place itself is where it'll be monitored. Yeah. But I mean, work work that to take care of their phone. They're not have to do it on their own. Right. Okay. Right. Just want to make sure since we give them a stipend and right. Tip. Yeah. This is the bill on top of that that we're going to be taking care of. And. One other quick thing, I met with uh, Jackson Demolition today on the old library. Um, he just came in to look things over and try to get a date nailed down. He's buried. And I told him with the fair and everything, we didn't want that going on during the fair. Um, he says, what about August 1st? Um, I said that works best for us because I know there's some people that still want to get, like Scott Samuels wants to get some stuff out of the, the building for homeless vets and uh, repurposing some stuff there. And it gives us more time to find a home for things. We have all of our utilities except for one uh, disconnected from the building. Um, he's thinking he wants to be in and out in a week to a week and a half because he's got road work that he's been on that needs to get done. And if he doesn't get get there on time, he won't get it. So um, that's where we left it. So it'll probably be the 1st of August before you see anything happening there. He's going to put a six foot fence around the exterior of the building during demolition. We've contacted CenturyLink and Mediacom. They are looking at relocating some of the low-hanging wires on the back side of the EMS building um, and taking those directly over, which he'll be way below all that. So it's we're coordinating a dance and trying to make everything work, but that's the latest update on that. The only other thing I, I have is I don't know what you want me to do about a flagpole for Memorial Park. I don't know if the council has talked to the park board and got anything arranged. I don't know who is supposed to handle that. Well, thank you. I, remind me, or to our memory, but when we took the old one down, we were going to put it back up. After it was taken down, it was pretty much to the point where it wasn't safe to put back. It's, it's not able well, the plaque, to put back. The plaque was taken off, it's been refurbed, it's ready to be put right. on whatever we decide to put up on. Okay. So now I guess it's between the park for us to decide that that water fountain has been op inoperable for a long time. Yeah. Does the park board want to put in a, in a new water fountain? At, I don't know, they're pretty salty as far as frost free. Um, or eliminate the water fountain uptown and just put the flagpole right there. I, that's, I mean, we need the park board's input. It's their baby, but I, I just I didn't want you to think that it was, be, it was I feel my baby to handle. We should be buying the flagpole since we're the ones that pretty much went in with them and took that one down before it fell down. So. I just didn't want to get blamed that nothing gets done. No, I, I didn't expect <laughs> I just, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm looking at the calendar going, holy crap, Memorial Day is two weeks. Yeah. And, and I don't know if he can get a hole dug in a flight pole. I mean, I'm sure he could, but he'd be pushing it. Yeah. But I don't I don't want him just throwing it up here and saying, oh, now we're going to move the water down and get yeah, rid of it. That one. Our so, board meets tomorrow evening. Okay. I won't. I won't be here. I know that. I, I'll be at the. Uh, There's just a question no. I have. Yeah. So. Okay. I won't worry about it. 
There you go. If you can bring it up to him. <laughs> Please. Yeah, because I, I just thought of that, you know, like I said, looking at this year's just coming so quick. It's like, uh oh. Anything else for Jim? Anyone? Okay, so for the park board. Well, it's, it's quote. It's really their decision, but we. I, I think the town should pay for the poll, and then they can go from there with it. That's just my thoughts. So I'm going with it. Okay. And the what do you think? Yeah, we can pay for the poll. I don't see no problem with that. The water fountain. Maybe. It's been how many years without it? I, I don't know. I mean, they look neat and they are nice. But I guess they have as much that they look nice, but they're yeah. out here. It'd be different if it was out there where it was more monitored, but this one up there, I don't believe. But there again, that's their call. I don't I, I think guess they got the money to do it anyway. So if you if they decide to eliminate that water okay. fountain, there's your stuff for your flight pole. Didn't you say that there's a light that shines right there too? There is. Because you'd have to move electric and all that if you. So light actually shine. It, it pretty much lights up the new monument. Right. The best right now. Yeah, because that's where the flag was. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's an but easy. Okay, that. There, there was three lights mounted there. They were supposed to point at each each mm -hmm. feature yeah, the of the of Memorial Park, and they got broken. And, but that's so, an easy fix there. Yeah, you could always do like you did at the cemetery for the solar light yeah. there too. I mean, so it's not prohibited. You can put it wherever you want, but or we could run electric to it. It's not that big a deal. So I mean, I think it's there for then their core. We'll just need to buy a piece of pole. Take this one down real quick. Take this one down real quick. Okay. Fire department you got the report looks like here. Um, on that note, as a liaison, I want to thank the community for showing up for the fire department fish fry. It was a success like normal. We had a lot of people just sitting around and talking and enjoying the evening. I mean it seemed to me like there was a hundred more people in there, but it was just the people stayed and talked. You know, they just, they had a good time. We gave out a bunch of things to the kids this year. Um, Lisa's husband Dave's in charge of our public awareness, and he had a bunch of coloring books and hats and bracelets and all that, and, and that was passed out to the kids, and I just thought that was neat, so. Thank them for that. And EMS. We don't have a report, but she does like quarterly, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even do that now. Can he do them? Or we just don't get them because of the. Well, I see the run reports. Well. Now we'll go to claims. Well, anybody check the department head reports? Make a motion to accept the department head reports. Second. Motion is second to accept the court minute reports. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Go on, Lisa. The total docket for um, May 17th, not the third, um, is $157,105.40. The top five claims are as follows. Number one is Marshall County title for $60,952. That would be for colonial estates. Um, claim number two, payroll number nine of $34,342.52. Number three is Town of Argus monthly sewer transfer would be $7,800. Number four is Royce Equipment Limited, which is $7,570.83. And number five is the Federal Reserve of $7,175.67. The top five claims total $117,841.02 and are 75% of the total docket.
I move to accept claims 517 through 585. Second. Motion step second to accept claims 517 through 585. Any discussion? Questions? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Motion carries 3 0. Anything else? Yes. Go ahead. At the fairgrounds, I believe it's this weekend, is barrel racing. Oh, this weekend? And it's a big event. There's a thousand registrations, which they say probably over 300 people just registered to participate. And these people come from all over the country. So it's going to be a big deal. So we have a lot of people coming in, and as a community, I think it would be great if we could learn how maybe we could support this, because they're going to be doing this a second time, and possibly a third time this year. So I don't know if it's a community. There's some ideas, but let's try and figure it out and be supporting. We got a lot bigger than they plan on. Yeah. Pardon? Are they getting any information out to the media to make sure there's coverage? I don't know. I don't know. Who's in charge of that? Who's, who's running the program? So, uh, I don't even know who's running the program. Uh, who owns the trailer place? Steve Pitt. Yeah. Can you give me your name and number? Yeah, he runs the trailer. What is that? I can't think of it. He doesn't live in Circle P Trailer. Yeah, yeah. Circle P Trailer. I can't find his number, but he yeah. used to be a Bremen cop. <clears throat> Good opportunity to meet him. Here's what I found on the web for use. <laughs> okay. Here's what I found on the web for Bremen cop, and that would give me anything. Then we're going to talk to you in the meeting. Anything else? You sure we're going to think of something when we walk out the door. But. I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>